everyone, in this video, I will explain about cognitive factors. But, first, let me introduce myself. My name is Puna Ulya with NPM 2051037. I'm from University of International Batam Faculty of Law. So, happy watching! I will explain about what is the cognitive factors. So, what is the connecting factors? In the conflict of law, connecting factors are fake which tend to connect a transactions or occurrence with a particular law or jurisdictions. Connecting factors are taken into consideration and weighed by courts and arbitrators in determining the proper law to apply in deciding the case or dispute. Connecting factors are some outstanding fake which establishes a natural connection between the factual situations before the court and a particular system of law. So, there are two kinds of the connecting factors. The first one is primary connecting factors and the other one is secondary connecting factors. What is primary connecting factors? Primary connecting factors is a connection point that provides credence that an event is an international private law or not or a tool that distinguishes whether a problem falls into the scope of international private law or not. So that is the connecting factors primary is also referred to as a differentiating point or in Indonesia we call it titik paut pembeda. So it's called pembeda because it gives us some idea or the idea or the warning that hold on your dealing with the conflict of law issues. So you cannot open up the way you cannot immediately enforce the other law because of the existence of the disconnecting factors we need to make analysis. So here are some things that have foreign elements. So let me say that know the issue of conflict of laws if there is no foreign element. So the preconditions of the existence of private international law are foreign elements. So here are some things that have foreign elements. Let me say again, not the issue of conflict of laws if there is no foreign element. So the preconditions of the existence of private international law are foreign elements. So let's we discuss about there are. The first one is nationality. The difference in nationality between the parties to a legal relationship will give rise to the issue of international private law. Example, an Indonesian citizen conducting a sale and purchase transactions with the German citizens. And then the second one is the flag or country of registry of the ship. The flags or ships refer to the place where a ship is registered for nationality and establishes which laws control for the ship or aircraft. The flag is the nationality of a ship in the event of a dispute over a ship leg by a particular country. Then the applicable law is the law under which the ship is flagged. Example, a Panama legged ship and the passengers who sail on the ship there are Indonesian citizen and the ship show on Indonesian waters, it will also give rise to foreign elements. 3. Domicile. The issue of domicile can also be a factor in the emergence of the issue of private international law. Example, a British citizen named Albert, a uh, domicile in Greece, and then he is married a British citizen named Bertha, and Bertha domicile in France. They are fellow British citizens but can also give rise to private international law due to the domicile difference. 4. Habitual resident. Example, Miss White, an American citizen, domicile in New York and work in Seattle. So her habitual residence in Seattle. And she is a marriage with Mr. X, an American citizen, and Mr. X, domicile in New York. And habitual residence will give rise to the issue of international private law. 5. Corporation domicile. Legal entities as legal subject also have nationality and place of residence. We call it legal seat. Generally, the nationality of a legal entity is determined based on the place or country where the establishment of the legal entity is listed. Example, PT Sinarjaya owned by Indonesia Joint Venture Agreement with Nanyang Limited Liability Company. 7. Law choice. The parties can determine which laws to be used as reference in the implementations of the contract. 
Example, PT Sawit Indonesia in collaboration with PT Oil Pratama, they cooperate to sell purchase pump oil. Then they choose the legal options in the Netherlands and the submissions of the agreement in Rotterdam. Next, I will explain about secondary connecting factors. Secondary connecting factors are the point of connection that answers which laws are used in dealing with private international law issues are the tools that determine the law that applies in private international law issues are also referred to as the determining point of link or the strongest links. The first one is lex arbitri, cruel law or lex arbitri. The law governing the procedure of the court or arbitral tribunal itself. And then lex domicile, the law of the place of domicile. And then lex consibia civil law. The name of a law which permitted a testator to dispose of three fourths of his property, but he could not deprive his heir of the other fourth. It was made during the reign of Augustus about the year of Rome, seven hundred fourteen, on the requisition of Falcidius a tribune. And then last for it, the law of the court or forum, and then lex loci, the law of the place, and then lex loci contractus, the law of the place of conclusion of the contracting, and then lex loci dami, the law of the place where the injury occurs. In other words, if an injury occurs in another country, the laws of that country governs provide that the torpedoes should have foreseen that the damage would occur there and then lex loci delicti the law of the place of the tort or delic and then lex loci solutionis the law of the place of performance of the contract and then lex longobardorum the name of an ancient code in force among the lombards it contains many evidence stretch of feudal policy it survived the destructions of the ancient government of lombardy by Charlotte Magna and is said to be still partial in force in some district of Italy. And then Les Mercatoria, the system of laws which is adopted by all commercial nations and which therefore constitutes a part of the law of the land. And then Les Neminum Cogit Advana Seu Inutilia Per Agenda, the law for no one to do vain or useless things. And then Les Non Cogit Impossibilia. The law does not require impossible things. And then, lex non scripta. Lex non scripta or unwritten law. All the laws which do, do not come under the definitions of written law is a composite principally of the law of nature, the law of nations, the common law, and customs. And then, lex recitae, the law of the place where the thing in dispute is situated. And then, lex scripta or law writer. This consists of the constitution of the United States, the constitutions of the several states, the act of the different legislature uh, as the act of Congress and of the legislatures of the several states and of treaties. And then Lex Talionis, the law of retaliation, an example of which is given in the law of Moses, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, and each other. And then Lex Terrae, the law of the land, the Paris is used to distinguish this from the civil or Roman law. And then Lex Vigilantibus Favet, the law sustains the watchful. So come on, let's go to make analysis from the cats. United States of America versus Bogor Agricultural University or IPB. United States of America needs to print APES because in America they don't have APES. Just a view. And in Indonesia so many APES. So they would like to make a deal with Indonesia and the Forest Minister of USA go to Indonesia to make a deal. They look for IPB. In Indonesia, United States of America and IPB University make a deal that United States of America would like to buy 800 APEs that will bring into America and they just stay in the Paris and the elders will be returned back to Indonesia. IPB University approved and it will cost in 80 million rupiah for each ape. They will save the apes by plane by next week. 
the United States will pay for the arrest after signing the contract. Then IPB and America sign a contract in Indonesia, which is in IPB University. And in a week later, IPB sent ATFs to America by plane. When the plane is above Swiss, there is one specific crazy app losing control and got out the cage and gave birth. And the steward news have idea to paralyze the ape and then all of the apes is after the United States of America want to sue IPB for protection of animals and considered not co to comply with the achievement of pervert and killing baby ape. So let's we make analysis from the case. The first step let's know that the problem have a foreign elements or not with primary connecting factors. And yes, the problem have a foreign element because the nationality of the veteran is the Indonesian law and the plaintiff is USA law. And the domicile of the veteran is Indonesian law and the plaintiff, as we know, is USA law. Then, legal entity of the veteran is the Indonesian law, which is the IPB University, and the plaintiff is USA law. Of course, the case is half a foreign element. So, because the case falls into the scope of international private law, the next step is to know that the strongest links for answers the applicable law of private international law uses, that is, secondary connecting factors. The first one, can we know that Lex Lossi Contractus is in Indonesia law, which is its IPB University, and then Lex Lossi Solutionist is in Indonesian law, and then Lex Lossi Delicti Committee is in Indonesian law. So, the connecting factors or the strongest links is Lex Fori Indonesian Law and Lex Causa is Indonesian Law. So, then what about cases that use choice of law? So, okay, let's see the case from decisions of Supreme Court of Indonesia in the next video.